Good morning. It's nine o'clock. Uh, the commissioner's court is now called to order. We're meeting in the uh, central jury room at the Hood County Justice Center at 1200 West Pearl Street. Would y'all all please stand for the invocation, JC? Thank you, Judge. Join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we gather here today, we ask that you be with us. Give us the wisdom and the guidance to do what is necessary and what is right for the citizens of Hood County. We ask that you remember our veterans who are serving throughout this country that gives us the right and the opportunity to meet such as we are today. Watch over us, lead us, and guide us for these things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Y'all join me to pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Show me the pledge of Texas. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you all very much. Uh, and this, this morning, Bob, you have any special presentations? Okay, we have a pre uh, presentation from the Upper Trinity River Groundwater uh, District. If you would uh, now, uh, if you have something to pass out, would you like to do that and make a few comments? Thank you. Thanks, sir. Give an extra one for the record. <clears throat> Thank you, Bob. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Judge and Commissioners, uh, for allowing me to make a brief presentation on the Upper Trinity Groundwater Conservation District, of which Hood County is uh, one of the members. We have four counties, uh, Hood, Parker, Wise, and Montague. And we are a state agency created by the 2007 legislature. And uh, our primary mission is to conserve water so that uh, we have a 50-year plan lined out so that uh, it's reviewed every five years and uh, changes made as necessary. And I wanted to give you a brief overview of the water use in Hood County. And uh, at overall, through the district, you can see in our first deal there, uh, by far the uh, public water systems are the major user. Uh, oil and gas would be the next major user, and then 1% is what we call business. That is primarily water sales to either public water systems or oil and gas. So that's, uh, uh, you can look at, at Hood County, is a little higher in the uh, uh, oil and gas use right now. Uh, this is for 2013, and uh, public water systems are definitely uh, a, a big user there for that, for that period. Uh, the third sheet there is the actual gallons of water used for each of our counties in the last four years. So you can kind of track water usage there and you can also see it uh, county by county broken down by public water systems, oil and gas, and commercial business sales. Uh, your two directors for our district are, are uh, Mike Massey, whose term expires uh, June of 15, and Richard English, whose term expires on June of 17. And so they've, they've been a big help to us. and. Uh, we, we utilize our board of directors, two from each county, appointed by the county commissioners, and uh, it, it is more than a second job. It's a tough job. <laughs> so uh, you can see the registered wells that we have in the district there. Uh, obviously, Hood County, we, uh, the west side of Hood, we would like to have more wells in our system. Uh, we do have an extensive monitoring well program, over 200 wells in the four counties. So we're measuring aquifer levels quarterly. We report that to the Texas Water Development Board, and it's part of our 50-year plan that we uh, come up, and it's called Desired Future Conditions. Uh, 
some of the major things that the district is doing at this time. We are just completing a state mandated uh, uh, review and revision of the groundwater availability model for the Northern Trinity Aquifer and the Woodbine, which covers most of North Texas. Uh, there's also a second aquifer that has a significant impact on all of our four counties, and that's called the Paleozoic. At this point, it is not considered a, a uh, relevant aquifer by the state, but yet we have a tremendous, tremendous amount of certain, uh, especially Montague and Wise and Parker, have uh, quite a few people that that's their only source of water. So we're defining that and getting that turned over for the state. And so uh, basically those are huge projects for us, uh, costing several million dollars. So. Uh, this is something that we, ha we have to do consistently for the Texas Water Development Board. So uh, if any of you have any questions, uh, there's a lot of data here on this. Bob, I do have a question. Number one, uh, Richard English is in the audience, so we ought to recognize Richard. He is back in the back, so I appreciate him being here today. But uh, what's the meeting coming up on, from the GMA 8 that I saw a public notice on, I believe, yesterday? Can you expand on that and, and the location? Yes, I surely can. Groundwater management area number eight is one of 16 GMAs in the state, uh, and those were uh, basically put out by the Texas Water Development Board and the legislature. And uh, the meeting is for a one of these projects that we have is, uh, again, it's a $2 million project. It has taken three years and we're the, we have like 26 scientists that have worked on this project for three years. That will be uh, presented in its entirety. There will be questions that the public, from the public, uh, it, it is open to the public. Uh, we, uh, again, that's, that's the largest water definition project ever happened in the state. So it's a major issue for us. And uh, we're very pleased at, at the results, and uh, it's been a lot of work by a lot of people. So we're very impressed with that. The meeting date and time and location? It is the 21st at uh, Cleburne at the Conference Center. Okay. So, and, and the public is welcome. Anybody else have anything? All right, well, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Joe. All right, uh, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Uh, does any commissioner wish to pull anything off the consent agenda? Hearing none, I'll accept a motion to approve. So move. Motion made by Commissioner Deaver, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tout. Uh, any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, we don't have anything on uh, road operations. No, okay, how about development compliance? Yes, Public sir. hearing? Yes, sir. Public hearing uh, to consider the site development plan for Fighting Eagle Distillery at 4605 Tintop Highway. <clears throat> this proposed plan is in Precinct 4. It has, uh, Correct. I'm sorry, Precinct, Precinct 1. 1. I'm sorry, yeah. they changed. Precinct 1. The, uh, the development is, is provided by, with uh, public water from Monarch. The, uh, the existing slab that, that you have before you is where they're going to set the, the structure at. It's a vodka distillery. And then, the, of course, the two circles back to the, to the south of it is where the OSSF is, is planned. Uh, they have submitted a, a plan to the Environmental Health Department uh, director and he's looked over it and has proved it. Staff has reviewed all the material and, and makes a recommendation to the court to approve this site development plan. Okay, a public hearing is now open to consider uh, or to hear comments about uh, a planned development for the Fighting Eagle Distillery at 4605 Tin Top Highway, Granbury, Texas. Does anyone wish to make any comments? No one? Okay, then uh, public hearing is now closed. Uh, I'll entertain a motion uh, on taking appropriate action on the development plan for the Fighting Eagle Distillery. Motion. 
Motion made by Commissioner Deaver, a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Barry. Any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. At first I thought that was <coughs> fighting the eagle to still, then I, I, <laughs> Okay, so we need to set a public hearing on a re replat of some lots out at Pecan. Yes, sir. Uh, the replat of uh, lots 564 and 565 in Pecan Plantation Unit 5. This is in precinct number two. Uh, staff recommends setting a public hearing for the May 12th, Monday, Commissioner's Court meeting. So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Barry to have a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Deaver to set a public hearing to consider uh, and take appropriate action on the replat of lots 564 and 565 Pecan Plantation Unit 5 in Precinct 2. Any further discussion? Just he noted it, Judge, but I think it ought to be noted for the for the notice is it's Monday the 12th since then we have school rest that week. I think he said that in his comments. Right, right. Okay, did everybody get that? We're not meeting on Tuesday at May the 12th, or in May, the first meeting in May, we'll meet on Monday because the commissioners uh, and the commissioner's court has to, uh, are, are, has a school conference. Uh, so any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much, Don. Mr. McBroom. Consider line item, line item budget amendments. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Uh, there is one budget amendment that has been requested uh, in the County Judge Office, and uh, this is to move uh, $2,500 uh, into an account to cover for visiting judges, and these are for uh, two cases that have been transferred to a statutory judge. Uh, they are contested cases, uh, and they'll be coming from primarily um, unused health insurance premiums uh, for one person who has waived those. And we would ask your approval to post that budget amendment. Okay, I make a motion to approve that. I do I have a second? Who? Second. Second by Commissioner Barry. Any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carried. Consider payment of bills. Uh, Judge, there is uh, one issue that I would like to ask uh, the purchasing agent to address before we get into the bills, and that's uh, related to um, authority uh, to pay some bills, make some purchases, uh, as it relates to a particular statute uh, that is required. Nelda? Under local government code 130? 130, yes. 908? <laughs> Good morning. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm here on behalf of the county clerk. They need to purchase some equipment that go makes them go over a one twelfth of their monthly budget. Um, they need this equipment. You have in front of you some quotes, but one of them is not correct. We have requoted the scanner, and I don't have a firm cost, but it will be not to exceed a thousand. Uh, when Mary saw that quote, she said she didn't need that that big of a a scanner that like that. So, so just for clarification, and since the judge brought it up, and Stan mentioned, government code says I believe since we had a big discussion about this yesterday, any elected or any elected official retiring or defeated because of the government code and it's one twelfth of budget has to be brought before court for approval. Is that the way you understand it? That is correct the way I understood it. So from now till the end of the year we'll be doing this every court. That is correct. Most likely. Okay. And then I believe you sent a letter yesterday explaining it to the three elected officials that are leaving office, correct? And I copied the court on that. I, I tell you that uh, here's here's the problem. The, the, the law I think there's almost a conflict in, in the law because we, this is, uh, this purchase uh, by the uh, uh, county, tr uh, county clerk's office is necessary to do their job. And we can't, we've got to approve uh, expenditures to allow them to do their job. And then they got this setting on top of it. So I don't see that we have any, any uh, recourse but to 
uh, approve that purchase. It's, it's not even coming out of county funds. It's coming out of special uh, county clerk funds. So uh, I, I'd say we just go ahead and and and. In the spirit of the law, though, Judge, I really think this law is written poorly at the state level because it should be for the new budget starting in October for the newly elected person coming in. What was happening is newly elected was spending all that budget before the other ones. As the outgoing were going out for three months. So, you know, that we'll, we'll abide by it, but at the same time, it's not a slap to any of the three that's leaving office, okay? Well, I, I, I agree with that 100%. It's, 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 it's for protection of the... Uh, the new people coming in on a new budget rather than the old people going out on the old budget. So, uh, but I say we go ahead and, and allow the, uh, the county clerk to make these purchases. Do we need a motion to second for this ahead of the regular agenda? I would think so. Is that a motion, Judge? Uh, we can, we, uh, we'll have a motion on that, okay. You want to make that motion, Commissioner? It doesn't matter, that's fine. Okay, I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The motion carried. Now, payment of, ratify payment of bills. Uh -huh. Judge and commissioners, as you know, uh, we're in the process of converting our accounting system, uh, purchasing system, payroll system, personnel records management system over to Tyler ENCODE. And so our reports are a little bit different. We're still trying to get comfortable with what reports are available. Uh, and we'll, we'll get back on track uh, with those. But your reporting a little, is a little different this morning. Um, you have a total of $207,788.29. Now of that, $790.32 is strictly for uh, adult probation expenses and we bring them here just to enter them into the public record. Um, but the bills I ask you to approve this morning come to $206,997.97. If you look on your payment register, uh, this is uh, the listing by vendor. Uh, on page three, you'll see that jail groceries to Benny Keith amount to $18,000. $17.38. And then on page four, the city of Granbury utilities come to $31,772.62. And these are just some of the larger items that are on this list. Of course, in your uh, consent agenda, you already uh, approved releasing the check to Tyler for 54000 for the Odyssey system. So that is not included on this list. But then on uh, page 15, uh, 13 rather, the Somerville County, out of county inmates, that cost is $24,054. And that is, uh, that is net of uh, credits for inmates that are in either jail. I believe they hold female in inmates for the sheriff over in Somerville County. <clears throat> on page 14, Texas Association of Counties, unemployment premiums, $17,654.73. And then on page 15, to U.S. National Bank Association, this is for the uh, fleet card fuel purchases on credit cards, $44,925.69. Um, we have made some progress on the system. The treasurer has been able to print these checks in payment of these bills, and um, it's, it's not without pain to go through a system conversion. They're still working on getting the payroll up and running, and, and we still need to do some training in the auditor's office and personnel, uh, treasurer's office, and the purchasing office. But we are making substantial progress, and um, I'm glad to report that we are able to uh, pay bills today. And I would ask your approval too. Before we do that, I, I, you made a statement to me uh, several, maybe a week or so ago, that that I, I, I let me preface this by saying I don't like this as well, as well as the old system, but I know we've got to do it. And but you said that as we grow, that you don't think our old system would be able to handle the volumes as as 
as we grow up toward 100,000 population? We were already experiencing some problems, uh, yes sir. And, and I believe, uh, as I told the purchasing agent, we may be at an in-between stage where uh, we may be at the upper level of what our former vendor was able to provide and support, uh, but as we try to move into this Tyler system, we may be on the bottom rung of, of size where a county would need to be to really effectively utilize it. Uh, most of the organizations that use this system are somewhat larger, and they would have more personnel specialized at managing the system itself, where we're not at a large enough size that we can specialize to that degree. That's just my opinion. Uh, those are just my views. Well, I like being able to look at a piece of paper, and now I have to do it on a screen. I, I know I'm old-fashioned, but I just, you know. I so. have all of those bills in a duffel bag in my car. Judge, I'll bring them by, and you can look at no, the pages all no. you like. No, I've already looked at them once. I have to bring them to the treasurer's office because uh, even though we're trying to get away from the paper shuffle, uh, you can't escape the fact that when you mail checks back, there are some, I'd say one out of three or four, that have a payment or a remittance advice that has to be included with the check. And others, uh, maybe one out of ten, are going to have a registration form that has to accompany the check. So. We still have to keep the original invoices. Uh, what we're trying to do is provide uh, a mechanism so that uh, anyone who needs to review it can review it online. Well, I know I was supposed to uh, initial these. What do I initial now? I, I'm lost. <clears throat> well, that is, that is done at the point in time whenever the packet is ready for you online? No, I know that, but but on these reports, every, every time we have a meeting, I have to initial these reports. So which that would be the, uh, the payment register and the check approval register? In this packet, the smaller packet? Uh, no, those, those, are your, uh, those are your accounting reports that show the results of operations. Okay, just do those in this packet, the bigger packet. I will, um, I will get you the, uh, the payment register and the check approval register for your initial okay. court, court packets. All right, thank you. All right, is there anything else on this? If not, I'll uh, entertain a motion to ratify payment of the bills. So moved. Motion made uh, by Mr. Commissioner Tout. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Beaver. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Stan. Miscellaneous. Consider and take appropriate action on a request regarding computer equipment for the district judge's office. Judge Commissioners, if I may. morning. This morning we're asking for three new computers for the district judge's office. Uh, well, one is for Tricia. She is the assistant court administrator. Uh, and one is for Ron Berryman, the bailiff, and the other one is for Judge Walton. Uh, we have been advised by the IT department that uh, these computers have XP, and XP as of today will no longer be supported so and therefore we are asking for new computers uh, in that realm um, I will say the one for Tricia uh, is is the one that's really needed the most because her computer is just since we've gone with Odyssey uh, it's just really slow since they have put that on there I know in the district clerk's office they replaced all of their computers but we held off um, hoping that we could uh, make them, you know, make them work somehow, but but uh, hers is just running really, really slow. Any questions? Uh, yeah, uh, we uh, let's we. 
Yeah, I do. Uh, we uh, we are uh, severely low on Fund 55 cash. Stan put out a new listing today, and uh, and it uh, if this could hold off until after September when we go on the new budget, we uh, will have more cash to be able to do that. But we, uh, if 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 y'all can do that. Uh, yeah, the, um, I would say that as far as uh, computers, uh, the bailiff, he really, he has three. Uh, we've only asked for one here uh, for to replace the courtroom, but what we're going to do in, for his office and then for the back jury room office is ask for a laptop with a docking station and or two computers, whichever is the most cost effective in that way. Um, but the one computer that we really need is Trisha's, um, is because it she'll bring up Odyssey or bring up and it just spins and spins. And then now they've put Tyler Encode onto her computer, and it's uh, it's it's very slow. That's that's I would say out of the three is the one that is the most critical. Okay. Yes. Uh, Unless you know IT or someone would have. Um, any ideas as to uh, beefing them up somehow? Is that is that possible? If that Judge, we just possible? got we just got the audit that we asked the IT department to do this morning. So, you know, this this goes hand in hand with what we asked for for the Fund 55 meeting. I don't see how you can give one department an item, and two weeks ago you don't give somebody else an item. So I think this needs to really go back to the Fund 55 meeting, and we need to discuss that for priority because. But, I mean, Jackie's staff has put together six sheets of all the computers countywide, the ages of those computers, and that way we'll know then what money we have available and what we can buy with and who needs to be replaced. Because he's actually broke it down by the age of the unit, what's upgradable, uh, Windows XP versus all the way through Windows 7 Pro, and then he's broke it down to memory and gigs and the processor. So, I, you know, I, I'm not prepared today. I, but I'm one person to buy anything from Fund 55. Since we've asked two weeks ago, we asked a constable to wait on a camera. I just don't see how that's fair to the other elected officials and all the appointed officials. Okay, I'll, I'll, then if that's the case, I, you know, and I agree that uh, because of this report here that was put out by the auditor's department that, that only, I think the only thing we need to buy out of Fund 55 is what is truly an emergency. All right. Do y'all have any money in your budget for these computers? I could possibly look into that and do that with that. I have a question though. I don't know the answer, so I mean, the JPs have technology funds. Does district court and county court law have technology funds? The district judges or district court, no, we do not. I know the okay. district clerk has technology. Right, and that's why I said some do not. That's why I'm asking pennies because yes, JPs do, uh, district clerk, as you mentioned, uh, that's why I'm asking. No, we do not. Well, the reason that you weren't in court last week, but you're right, and you heard him say this morning, hey, we paid Tyler. You heard the judge give the dissertation about the first time we've seen bills with Tyler. All I'm wanting to make sure we do is the ones that are running Tyler, because I've asked Jackie this question. I, my computer is still running fine on XP. I'm not upgraded. Some of the other commissioners are upgraded. So I'm actually running a little test to, to see mine hasn't crashed, but I'm not running Tyler or net data. So all I want to make sure is that we're not buying computers for somebody that's not running Tyler or that's not running ENCODE that truly needs it. Because we have a lot of people that come to the podium and just say, oh, my computers are acting up, I'd like to buy three new ones. That's, and that's why Jackie went to the trouble of these six sheets to break down what we truly need. Right. Now, Trisha's computer, it does run Tyler, right. all, of, all of Tyler. And that's what it says, now, I looked it up. And the um, judges, computer and Ron's, they do not. Correct. They, uh, Ron's runs Spillman. It's not a punishment, it's just a fact of trying to get our most bang for our buck because, not to throw Jackie on the bus, we spent a lot of money on upgrading technology to move up to the new EOC. And, you know, what I'm hearing the auditor tell me when he sends the emails out and the paperwork is we need to see where we are and let everything settle out before we just you know, and that way we know what we have to get through the rest of this budget year. 
and that's all I'm asking everyone to do is just be patient. Uh, you're right, Tricia does say that. She is running in code. She'll be a high priority, okay? Yeah, and running, running very slow and at Just that. give us a little time to work out the, the, the priority list is all I'm asking, okay? Well, thank, thank you, you, Penny. Thank you. I'll make a motion to table this request, Judge. Motion Check. made by Commissioner Barry, seconded by Commissioner Deaver uh, to table this uh, item. Is uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Penny. Thank you. Consider and take appropriate action regarding request of the uh, Hood County Judge Commissioners to designate Tornado fin Finance Relief Committee United Way uh, Mission Granbury to act uh, as the LTRC for the tornado disaster of May uh, 15, 2000. Marilyn Luton will be present to present. And here she is. <laughs> Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Uh, thank you for taking the time. I'm going to read what I wrote because uh, I don't want to miss anything. And I think it'll give you the information to know where we're coming from. Uh, the, the reason we're asking for this designation is because we receive funds from very large nonprofit organizations. And I have been receiving letters saying that we are coming to the end of our funding and we will need a report from your LTRC. And as we know you are acting as the LTRC, we will expect a report from you. Um, we are only asking for the designation as it relates to the tornado of May 15, 2013. Um, it is important for us to complete our mission uh, for the recovery of the survivors and we need these fundings. Uh, the Tornado Finance Committee is not all about finance. Over the course of the past 11 months, this committee has added case management, mental health, construction, fundraising, Texas Neighborhood Services, uh, and we have dealt with issues that have popped up, as you all well know, of repairs, cleanup, and the addition of our seven modulars, which are all in place which are all on their foundations, and the demolition has been done on all seven, and we are already have four of them ready to, uh, they're all framed out inside. So in the next three weeks, you'll be driving out there, and you will definitely see, uh, you know, the, how far it's come along. Uh, the Ministerial Alliance, county officials, other nonprofit agencies in Hood County, the city of Granbury have all played a vital part of our committee. This committee has become a possible foundation for building the LTRC. We have all the intricate parts, people, and organizations to build a committee to be ready for our next disaster. I respectfully ask for this temporary designation to complete the task we were charged with and have done due diligence for the victims that we now call survivors. Any questions? I would like to really thank you uh, and your committees and everyone that's been involved in this. I know that it's been a tortuous situation to get all this done. And I have driven out there and uh, and I thought you guys put them in backwards. I thought, I thought, oh my God, how are they going to get out? There's a front porch there, but there's no door. And uh, so, and then I, I realized what was happening that you're going to cut a door there and, and make it because it was an old duplex that you're now making into a home. So, right. I had wanted to take a magic marker and draw doors <laughs> on all of the door knobs yeah. just so people would know we had not put them in backwards <laughs> because we did get lots of those phone calls. I bet. Yes, I bet. we did. We did. It wasn't what I did not call though. Okay. No, you did not. You were not <clears> on that <throat> list. All right, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the temporary designation for a period of 18 months uh, for the Tornado uh, Relief uh, Committee, uh, United Way and Mission Granbury to act as the LTRC. So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Tout. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Barry. Uh, any further discussion? And all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, man. Judge, I took a drive out there about a week ago, and it's like a brush of fresh air out there at Rancho Brazos. Well, the, uh, you know, each family had to sign a sweat equity agreement, and with this sweat equity, they are required to put in anywhere from 25 to 50 hours on their place. Uh, their first order of business is cleaning up their lots. A lot of these people owned three lots, and they thought they could get by with just cleaning one lot. Well, no. That's, that didn't work for our committee. So you will see in the next three weeks. By May 15th, 
we hopefully will have all of them in their homes. Now, the landscaping may not be done, uh, the drive, the carports and that kind of thing, but we will have these families in their home. And it looks good out there. Thank you. It's come a long way. And thank all of you for your participation. No, thank you. My pleasure. <clears throat> All right, consider take appropriate action regarding the draft of a memorandum of understanding between the uh, Emergency Operations Center of Somerville and Hood Counties. Mike Ford of Somerville County, uh, Som Somerville County Judge, he uh, wrote a letter dated 2-13-14 and wrote, his, he wrote and said, my hope would be that uh, we should agree on the language of an MOU uh, when we could uh, go, then go to FEMA and, and uh, COG to make our case for a mobile command center that would float to whichever EOC was not affected. And this would be in case that we had a tornado and one of the EOCs was damaged uh, to a point that where they couldn't be used. And we would have a mobile unit that then could be pulled over to the uh, EOC that was not impacted and uh, plug up to their electricity and their communications and their county could be in operation. So he would like to consider this uh, uh, memorandum of understanding between these two counties. Now is that utilizing the, the trailers we already have in, in existence? No, this would be a brand new one. That we're going to, he, he wants to go to FEMA and COG to make a case for this mobile command center that would be used for both counties. Several counties instigating this? Yes. How many, how many traders do we have right now? Of the MMUs? Yes. What's the different deal? Two mobile medical units one command center. This would be to house the members of the, uh, like when we stand up the EOC. This would be a, a command center, true, not on site at the, at the disaster. Like we pull one out to Rancho Brazos, you remember that night, and then the next, uh, but then we still had a lot of people, a lot of people at the EOC. But this would just be in case that something happened to one of the EOCs. Be a backup EOC. Backup EOC is all it is. Is it a purchase or is it be good funded with a grant? Uh, funded for through FEMA and COG. Not through the county. Okay. Question who would be responsible for keeping it? Where would it stay? I don't know, probably Somerville County. Okay. Does anybody have any comments about that? Who's going to who's going to draft the the Mike Ford will okay. He's the one that kind of initiated this right, anyway. Right, right. Yeah. And I'll uh, uh, would y'all uh, give your approval? I need a motion to uh, to move forward on this draft memorandum uh, of understanding between uh, emergency operations centers of Somerville and Hood County. Motion. Motion made by Commissioner Deaver. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Tout. Any further discussion? And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Consider and take appropriate action to approve signing a resolution in support of a constitutional amendment for the increase of state funding for tra uh, transportation. The resolution is in support for a constitutional amendment for, uh, on the November the 4th, 2014 ballot to address Texas transportation infrastructure needs by providing that a portion of the existing oil and gas severance tax be dedicated to the state highway fund. Judge, at the Tarrant Regional Transportation Coalition meeting that's held the first Wednesday of every month, uh, the group from, has asked all the commissioners, courts, and city councils to do a resolution in support of this. It will be on the November 4th ballot, as you stated. Uh, it's asking uh, a constitutional amendment, kind of like the water amendment was, but it's asking to take approximately five billion per year, and it would only drop down to two and a half billion, uh, because according to the latest report of the 2030 commission, it takes approximately 6.1 billion dollars per year to uh, handle some of these road projects. So what it is basically is the court is asking, we're, the court is supporting this amendment uh, because of. Uh, other areas trying to get people to support the, the uh, ballot on November the 4th.
for this amendment for transportation dollars. Are you making that motion, Commissioner? I will. So move. Motion made by Commissioner Barry to have a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Deaver. Uh, any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carried. Discuss and take appropriate uh, action on a request for Hood County employees to pay, pave the parking lot at Mission Granbury office. Mission Granbury will purchase and provide all materials. Does anybody, uh, uh, Mr. Hetherington, do you want to come up and address this? We, uh, Grand Bear is doing a great thing with lots, lots of stuff that they've got going, and they've got a parking lot out there that needs, needs paving. Uh, all they need, all the, it's, it's in perfect shape. All they need to do is put some oil on it, put some top on it. it won't take them, won't take them a whole day even to do it. It's about 8,000 square feet is all it is. And, uh, I feel like that, uh, we need to go out there and do that for these people, help them out on this. For the reason is that they don't, they spent a lot of money on a new building and they're running a little short on funds with all the stuff that they've been doing. And I feel like that we could help them do that. I don't see our county attorney, but uh, I believe she says that it may not use any equipment, labor, or materials to pave a road, which is. Uh, the general public is didn't well anyway she's quoting a lot of uh, I read that I read that uh, with our last county attorney he said when we got to be 50,000 people the commissioners had a lot more power than they did before I don't know but I do know this for a fact if anything happens and they fall somebody falls there ain't nobody gonna put you in jail for helping these people out I guarantee you that <laughs> I agree so I'll, uh, what's the uh, commissioner's pleasure on this? Well, per uh, Ms. Casper's report, I would recommend we do not take any action to pave the parking lot. So are you, are you making a motion that we table this? I, well, I don't see a need to table it. We might as well. Here's the thing, it, it could, uh, the way that Ms. Casper explained it to me is, is that we can do this if it's in the public interest and that they will pay for the mater materials and the time. And labor. And labor, yeah, labor. So uh, it, it, we've got to be compensated in some way. Because uh, we did this for somebody over in Toler, I think a city, and it's and uh, and uh, but they gave us uh, like free water or water something. Shirt. So that's we're being paid for that. We get compensated for that. So if we got compensation, would you be against it? Well, that, what I would say to I mean, as bad as I have, I love I think we should help every organization we can help. But Ms. Casper is elected to be the county attorney. Just as uh, former Commissioner Hedden said, with the way one attorney reads the law versus the way another attorney reads the law is, a, is two different things. But when our county attorney that's sitting says, in my opinion, we cannot use county equipment or personnel to pay this parking lot, even if they donate the material, it's pretty blatant to me. Secondly, if we start getting in the business of paving parking lots and charging people for paving parking lots for our cost of our personnel, then we're going to have paving companies on free enterprise aggravated at the county and the court. And, and so as bad as it is, uh, I kind of I agree with Commissioner Tout. It's, there's no reason to table this. I think it's just a new obstacle we're having to deal with. Is as laws change and come out, it just Ms. Casper's opinion says it the way she reads it, and she quotes one, two, three, four, five, six attorney general opinions on different varying cases. So. You know, it's not maybe what we want to see, but that happens daily. Well, then I'll entertain a motion to approve this, and if it dies for lack of a, a motion or a second, then it goes away. So uh, I'll entertain a motion to discuss and take appropriate action uh, for the request of Hood County employees to pave a parking lot at Mission Granbury office. 
Mission Grandbury will purchase all, provide all materials. Do I have a motion? Okay, there's no motion. Uh, the uh, I, item uh, dies for lack of a motion. I'd like for this uh, opinion to be uh, part of the record for the commissioner's court, though, that she's given all of us. Okay, you can. I'll make sure Mary gets a copy. Okay, good. Discuss and take appropriate action on the purchase of a new uh, control panel for the jail. I believe that uh, that we have. Uh, uh, I talked to Tim about this, and he says and, uh, that the board is working, and uh, so I don't believe there's any item uh, that needs to be taken, or no, nothing to do on this item, so we're going to move on to item seven. Consider and take appropriate action to declare a surplus of old courthouse benches and cabinetry from uh, the annex uh, to be sold at uh, Renee Bates auction. Commissioners, again, um, out in Acton, we have several benches, and from what I understand, I'm going to get some more out there. Uh, these are the ones that were in the courthouse down on the square, the ones with the orange padded seats. Uh, right now, I have three 12-footers. One is broken, uh, and then I have one six-footer, but I've been told I may have as many as five more coming back out there. This takes up an extreme amount of storage. And then we have the cabinets that were removed from the Acton Annex when TAC went in there. There's a, um, like a countertop with cabinets under, and then there are other cabinets that attach to the wall above. They're, they're very nice cabinets. But the problem we also run into is they're sitting out there. The cabinets have been there for three or four years, probably. I don't, I don't remember. What, what kind of happened. cabinets are they? Well, it's uh, shelf bottoms when we bought the Acton Annex. Some of them used parts of the cabinets in place. Some of them pulled off the tops and used the bases. The only problem I have with this uh, uh, item, the way it reads at Nelda, is it's pretty vague on knowing how many we're selling or what we're selling. I'd, I'd like to see a complete inventory. Okay, I can wait. It's not a problem. I just know it takes up a lot of room. And in the meantime, these cabinets are going to deteriorate. I don't have a problem with it, but I mean, it didn't say that we're selling. I mean, I'd like to see that. I mean, yes. those benches serve their purpose. Judge Togel's in the back of the room, and they serve the 51 side. And They've served their purpose, so I understand that. But well, Nelda, Nelda came to me and said that uh, they were running out of space, and I said, she, and I said, well, put it on the agenda. No, I'm good with. It. I just if she gets it prepared to put on Renee Bates, yeah. I guess my motion would be to allow her to sell surplus benches and cabinetry that's in a storage facility at Acton Annex, uh, pending a complete inventory sent to the commissioner's court. I can give you a list. I just know that there are some that are coming that are not there yet. Okay, I have a motion by, by Commissioner Barry uh, to uh, sell the surplus benches and cabinetry from the Anne, uh, Acton Annex uh, pending a complete inventory of those items. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tout. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Nelly. Consider take appropriate action uh, to pay the audiovisual innovations invoice uh, the amount of two hundred seven thousand nine hundred thirty nine dollars and twenty four cents for the uh, EOC. Judge commissioners, this is the I believe the last item in the technology area of the emergency operations center uh, at this time. The uh, we were waiting for some of the furniture to be finalized and moved in so that we could uh, do this final piece of the installation. The original uh, proposal that we had from Visual Innovations was $204,849.35. Um, there were additional charges placed on that because we had to make a couple of return trips because of waiting on the tables and the furniture and then adapting for that furniture and some things of that nature in there. So what I was coming to the court for today was to bring you with this new invoice, which is for, let me get to the right page, 207,939.24.
which closes out visual innovations with their complete installation and they are still coming back to do a round of training with us as well. But they did come up, they did spend several days here installing with the new furniture that's there and we're taking care of a few items on our side uh, with maintenance in that. Stan, is all of this, uh, this is in your list here that's been approved and taken out or? Okay, that's. Okay, very good. There is, there is Okay, I just want to make sure it was in your numbers. Thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve paying this audiovisual uh, innovations invoice, uh, invoice number 12001. So let, me, let me just understand what Stan just said. It is on page four, so you've already, it's already got a purchase order authorized and issued. So you've accounted for it minus the, you accounted for 204 and it's 207, so it's about 3,000 difference, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So that's what we're approving is three grand on this. Correct. Well, we're paying the bill basically, yeah. but yes, it's already, we've already talked about it in Fund 55. Yes, tools. sir, that's okay. a good way of putting it. And that, wouldn't that be a correct statement, Stan? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have a motion? I don't have a motion yet. So moved. Motion second. made by second. Commissioner Tout. Do you second it by Commissioner Barry? This Any is the closeout, Jackie, or with all that. Close out on that. What was the what was the final number, Jackie? Final number on that, Commissioner, was two oh seven nine thirty nine. Thirty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Okay. That's what's on that's what's on the All right. I have a motion and a second. Uh and there's, there's no further uh, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carried. Uh, that completes it. It's 9.52 and we are adjourned. <laughs>